10 things to discuss before getting married because love alone simply isn't enough. Mm, this should be a juicy one. Let's talk about it. everyone welcome to our channel my name is jen and i'm shane and this is humble beginnings to winning so as i mentioned love alone is not enough and we feel that there are many other factors that are very important you know before marrying someone so these are 10 factors we didn't want to go down a, a, a whole laundry list but these are just 10 that we feel are important to discuss before getting married right so as mentioned before getting married love alone is not enough and i know that can be a very odd thing to say because Marriage is based off of love, 100%, and first and foremost, to be mm -hmm. honest. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of things, there's a lot of factors that go into having a successful marriage, a long-lasting marriage, mm -hmm. and it goes beyond love. Oh, and there's of things that you need to know about your partner before you take that step and become one. Yeah. And I think that's really important. And we want to just break down 10 things that go beyond love Yeah. that we want to talk about that can add value to your long-lasting, successful marriage. So, all right. So, we're going to get into it then. Let's go. With that said. So, number one, um, and when we say these, they're not in order. It's no not order. like no. these topics, one trumps the other. Um, but just kind of kicking it off with finances, mm. which is so important. Yeah. Um, when it comes to finances, you have to be very transparent right. and um, honest with your partner because when you go into a marriage, you know, you guys are two that are now becoming one. And so you can't like have these skeletons in your closet if you have debt per se yeah. that your partner doesn't know about because ultimately it affects them. Right. And so in order to tackle it, I got to know what's going on. We have to we have to discuss those things. And I, I get it. It can be a little bit embarrassing and a little shameful yeah. sometimes because who wants to go in and say, hey, you know, we're about to do this marriage thing. But by the way, I got $100,000 in student loan debt, you know. And you know what's funny? Stuff like that happens all the time mm -hmm. because either one person is embarrassed or you guys just aren't having that open communication, that yeah. open dialogue within mm -hmm. your relationship. Yeah. And you guys just aren't there yet. Yeah. But you guys have to be there definitely on the finance side, because as you move into adulthood, whether you're 20, 30 or older, you mm -hmm. have to, you know, finances is a huge thing in life. So yeah. making sure that you guys are on the same page mm -hmm. is very vital. It's um, very vital. Yeah. So it just, it goes beyond just like the debt but also like knowing your partner's credit, yeah, your credit yeah. history. I mean, because if you guys want to make a big purchase where you where you need a loan or something, yeah, that can affect you. If somebody has filed for bankruptcy and you never knew, and they have a five hundred uh, credit score, yeah. like yeah, and then you might not be able to uh, apply or be able to get the things that you want, and it may put an obstacle yeah. in the way of things because your partner simply didn't know. Yeah, and had your partner known early on before you guys decided to make such a big purchase or at least attempt to, um, you guys could have tackled it as a team just right. saying like, okay, well now we have to come up with a slightly different game plan. The goal is still to, you know, achieve mm -hmm. whatever it is that we want to do and have that big purchase, but we may have to go about it differently just because of, you know, any financial hardships that you yeah. may have experienced in the past. So exactly. So for I, sure. I think it's really just about having that open communication. And it's more, it's not so much about, Oh, I'm not going to marry this person because their finances in, isn't where yep. it should be. It's more yep. so just like, dang, why wasn't I aware of this before getting yeah, married? Just the lack you know? of the communication about it. And so, this actually, Oh, I'm sorry. I was oh, going to say one thing. Yep. Uh, as we're talking about just like any like bills or, or debt that you may have kind of going into continuing the conversation about finances, also financial expectations, right. you know, and that's, that's, that's a whole nother point because you're talking about like current, current finances is important. That's one point. And then mm -hmm. the second point is financial expectations. Like you were saying, exactly. Like, and when I say financial expectations, there are so many factors involved with that, that you can really dissect that. But what I'm talking about is when it comes to like financial expectations, when it comes to your partner, do you want your spouse to work? 
mm, you know, or yeah. do you do you want your wife to stay at home and manage the home and the kids while you be the breadwinner or vice versa? Right. Do you want to be a stay at home dad and, you know, have the time to time to raise your kids yeah. and, and your your wife is the sole provider, your partner's the sole provider? Those things are very important because sometimes what happens is people go into these relationships with different expectations. And when one person doesn't meet up to the expectation they're a little bit upset like oh well i don't know if i want my woman working yeah. but you're with someone that wants to work exactly you know so yeah no yeah and that, that's that happens all the time mm -hmm. as well you guys have to be on the same page and you have to have the same type of expectations so. yeah yeah and it's it's all about again it's like it's so funny because we always drive this home but like communication is so important because yeah. it's nothing wrong if you want to be you know a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home wife who manages mm -hmm. the home or vice versa the husband or dad but your partner has to be on the same page with you too you yeah. have to be with someone that also wants that yeah. or is okay with that and and that kind of brings me to mm -hmm. like when it comes to that situation it's okay if you guys both have different perspectives on it mm -hmm. maybe maybe one person does want a two two income household and yeah. the other person wants a one income household but if you guys have that communication before marriage and you guys come to a mutual understanding, that's where the real work lies yep. before yep. marriage. Mm -hmm. And like we're saying, this is all goes beyond just the love. This is that that dialogue that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So we could dive into this, but we want to get through all of these points. Mm -hmm. So the third point is children. Yeah. Children is a huge thing that has to be discussed. Yes. I mean, you guys... It, this goes along the lines of expectations. Yeah. Do you want kids or do you not want kids? How many kids do you want? If you do want kids, it's it's yeah. a huge thing that, I mean, it's it's a milestone for a lot of people. Yes, yes. I mean, to some people that is a part of their identity, right. having children yeah. or something that they have dreamed of since they were a young kid, you yeah. know, it is important to have that conversation. And let's say you guys do uh, both decide that you want to have children, you know, just things such as like parenting styles, which is very yeah. important. And I know, you know, based on how you were raised plays a factor into how you parent your children. I mean, of course, everybody will do their own thing. You you do what works for you, but you have to have a conversation about that. You because, have to. And, and mm -hmm. you have to have multiple conversations. Yes. When it comes to such big life decisions such mm -hmm. as children because one conversation isn't going to cut it's it. It's simply not you, enough. Yeah. You, expectations or things could change year year in and year yeah. out. So yeah. if you're together three or four or five years before getting married, mm -hmm. you guys have to have multiple conversations over that time span to, yeah. to check in, to say, hey. Where, where are we at with this? Yeah, where are we at with this? Yep, Yeah. yep. And now we're going to go into point number four, mm. which is all of these are, are big, but this too is a big one, which is why it's on the list. And that's religion. Mm. Religion is very important because you want to make sure that you all are on the same page when it comes to beliefs. I'm sure we've all have seen it in movies. We have seen it in TV shows. And we may have even seen like personal, personal friends and family affected by this particular topic yeah. where their relationship didn't quite work out because of religious beliefs. Yeah. And so I think it's important to have that conversation because your religion for some people is their foundation. Yeah. It's what, it's what drives them. Yeah. And if all else has failed or they've lost so many things in life, they can always rely on their faith. Yeah. Their faith is what carries them and being with someone who respects that, who understands that, who also probably has the same religious beliefs as you this, there are many relationships that don't but again i'm sure they've had a conversation about it and so yeah. it's very important because the last thing you want to do is be judged by your partner because you know of the religious religi beliefs. Of, of religious beliefs or, or from family members and whatnot and, but you're already in the relationship yeah. it's, it's, you're in too deep now yeah um so it's important to have that conversation early on definitely before marriage because you don't want to have that conversation after marriage and then be like, oh, man, like, yeah, we're just too different. And, and not only. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. And that kind of gets me to a, a, a similar point. Uh, it's not religion, but it's moral beliefs as well. Hold on. But before you go into moral beliefs, I was going to say one thing that was very closely related to, you know, the religious beliefs. And that is you got to have the conversation before marriage because that ultimately decides what your marriage and your ceremony will look like, oh, you know, yeah, it's like, yeah. 
how do you plan to become one? Like, right. what does that process look like? Yeah. And in order to figure that out, you have to have that conversation. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I was saying about moral beliefs, it, it's kind of, it's a piggyback off of religion. When it comes to moral beliefs, like, what do you believe? What internally, like, drives you? What is, mm-hmm. it, what is it internally that is a no-no? Like, it's like, nah, I, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. You, you guys have to be on the same page when it comes to moral beliefs as well. You guys aren't going to be 100% identical. In Nobody, sync or, Yeah, mm-hmm. nobody's in sync or identical, you know, in thinking 100%. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. as far as like deep moral beliefs yeah. of how you operate in life, your habits and, and the things that you do on a daily basis or the things that you believe in, I think it's really important for your partner to have some of the same beliefs or some of those deep value beliefs that you believe in because that is what's going to connect you guys on a deeper level. Yeah. So that was point number four. And now we're going to talk about point number five. And this topic that we're going to highlight is going back to expectations. And that's within your partner, just as far as like your love language and how you choose to communicate within your relationship. Yeah. Is quality time important? Affection, care, compatibility i mean there's there's so many things when it just comes to your partner like what do i expect from jen yeah and 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 that may look very different for the both of you all and that is okay yeah but you just because everyone enjoys certain things in a relationship while another while your partner may not Mm -hmm. and that's fine like for example we both enjoy quality time so that works for us because we both discuss that quality time is very important in our relationship Mm -hmm. and so you know, I may not be as much into gifts, but what I do know is that I really want to spend time with you. So if you're showering me with gifts, that I appreciate it, but it doesn't really do much for me because right. that's not what I'm asking of you. I'm exactly. asking for your your time. Yeah. And so it's important that you got that mm-hmm. that your partner knows and that it's communicated and that it's communicated. Because yep. You could be thinking one thing, but if you mm-hmm. never verbalize it to your partner, then how they will ha- they know? They won't mm-hmm. know. So mm-hmm. that that verbalization. Mm hmm is very important mm-hmm. and you have to be able to listen and and connect with your partner of to be course. like okay let me cater her cater to her needs or mm-hmm. cater to his, his needs. needs yep and now we're going to go on to the next point which is a juicy one and i already think y'all knew this was coming like we had to talk about this because and it's important it's, very, it's important. very important and that is sexual intimacy and expectations right sex can make or break a relationship. It can. And it's important to understand what those expectations are and to discuss it before you get into marriage so that your partner understands, you know, Um, it it has, it has to be communicated. Yeah. It has to be communicated before marriage, but it's even deeper than that when it comes to uh, this topic of sex, because this is a long game. Marriage is a long game. So yes, the intimacy in year one might look different than the intimacy, intimacy in and, year 10, in year five, year mm-hmm. 10, mm-hmm. year 30. It's a long game, but the expectations have to be set up front, but then also continue to be revisited on, exactly. a, on a regular basis mm-hmm. to be like, hey, like. And you understand know. that it may change. It may not look the same that it looked in year one. And that can be very different for people when it comes to the way that it was in year one versus the way that it is in year 30. And that doesn't mean that year 30 is worse or not as good as year one. Yeah. You know, it, it can be very, very different because everyone's relationship is different. But as you said, you just have to revisit it yeah. and have those conversations. Yeah. So because that if, if, if the conversation isn't there and you're just going year after year of disappointment, then eventually that that falls, that can lead down another path that can lead down a path of destruction of other things of mm-hmm. just like bad communication or irritability mm-hmm. or just annoyance with your partner because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you're not getting fulfilled in one area that you feel that you should. And you need to be on the same page when it comes to those expectations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And obviously, this is a big one that that affects a lot of marriages. Um, Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that this is something that is on the list because for all the newlyweds out there or the people that have been or thinking about marriage, it's very important because, like I said, marriage is a long game. 
It is a long game, and you want to make sure that you continue to have that chemistry with, with your partner, chemistry. whatever that whatever oh, that looks like for your what marriage. What a beautiful word. Mm-hmm. What a beautiful word. We might have to do a whole other topic on just <laughs> chemistry. chemistry alone, but <laughs> sexual chemistry is a huge thing. It's and a huge making, thing. making sure that that sexual chemistry stays intact, intact you know? is, intact. is mm-hmm. very important for the health of your marriage. For the health marriage. of your marriage, for sure, for sure. And speaking of health and marriage... Family history and family health is so important. Mm. That is the that is something that you have to discuss. And I know no one wants to pull out like their whole 23 and me and like break it down. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to because if you decide that you want to have children right. or things like that or things that you may want to do throughout the course of your marriage, you have to know what your health looks like. Yeah. You know, does diabetes run in your family? Yeah. Is it a genetic thing? Are, are, is your family prone to, to heart disease um, or cancer? You right. know, all of those things are, are so important because at the end of the day and what we've been saying, you want to have a everlasting marriage and you're in it for the long haul. And so it's important to know what your, I guess, like health picture yeah. looks like so that you guys are both healthy and happy right. together. And this one is one that can be very easily overlooked because Mm -hmm. you're so focused on your own relationship, just one and two, Mm -hmm. you know, just becoming one, but you're not looking at the whole family dynamic or the family history of your health or your partner's health. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is a huge discussion that you should have for all the reasons that she said, but Mm -hmm. it goes just, it goes beyond family history, health. But mm-hmm. just family history in general. Yeah. Like discussing family history, like where your family's from. Where I your mean, family's you know, from. It, Any trauma, yeah. you know. Um, like how you grew up. Yeah. Like some of the, like, did you grow up poor? Did you grow up rich? You grew up. Did you grow up in a two parent home? Did you grow up, you know, with siblings? Right. Like all of these things are important because that has shaped the way that you grew up. Right. And is um, a part of who you are. Exactly. And, and, mm-hmm. Sorry, I, I'm getting excited. I know. I'm getting excited. It's the but, second time, but I ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> 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 no, but I was going to say, I mean, it's really important to have those conversations. And obviously, you're probably thinking, like, listen to this, like, of course, we've already had those conversations. But we want you to get deep into mm-hmm. that family history, mm-hmm. deep into some of the family trauma that you had or yeah. or or some of the family issues or, or just the background overall like yeah like get into the nitty-gritty questions of just like man i really want to know who you are how mm-hmm. you grew up yeah and everything about you so yeah. before before we get married because mm-hmm. this is the person i'm gonna spend the rest of my life with i want to make yeah. sure that this is somebody that i can rely on trust and just know and, exactly and also better and understand yeah, yeah like know in and out and better understand because all of those things kind of results in like your communication style, like how you respond to challenges, yes, um, yes. how you, you know, communicate all of these, all of those things are very important. Yeah. And, and a lot of times your family history plays a vital role in that. It, it's a part of your identity, who right. you are. And so it, it's how you choose to respond to the world. Sometimes how you based act, on how you, you react. Will, you are, exactly. So. Right. It's important for your partner to to know that so they can better understand you and, and you know, and also like know how to support you yeah. because support may look very different for the both of you guys. And so I need to know who you are, how you grew up, you know, what are your triggers, what right. affects you, this or that, so that I know how to support you in a time where I th- those things may not necessarily bother God, me. That's an incredible yeah. point. I really love that last point that you mm-hmm. made. Speaking of triggers with your last point Mm -hmm. like i think that is that's a really good segue to the next topic that's separate from family history health which is mental health yeah mental health from your family and mental health individually you want to make sure that you guys verbalize to each other if there has ever been any issues with mental health because you don't want to be in a situation when you guys are married where now you're dealing with something that you had no clue and you're kind of blindsided that this is this is the case yeah or if let's say you didn't struggle with mental illness in the past but it is something that's affecting you now Mm. um because the world 
is ever changing yeah. and we're all affected by it in some capacity. It's just important to express that so your partner knows how to support you yeah. when you are experiencing these moments where mental illness is kind of in, at play yeah. um, or at bay per se and it's affecting your day to day. And And as we're going through this list of things that can help your marriage before actually getting married, it, it's really starting to make me think like a lot of these points are points that you should be talking about on a consistent basis. Like yeah. it's not just a one conversation thing. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't mm -hmm. be just having this conversation mm -hmm. uh, once before marriage and it's like, okay, I got this done. All right, we're, we're ready. Yeah. No, this is something that you continue to have conversations about because like she said, the world is ever changing. Your life is ever changing. Yeah. And there's situations that are going to happen. There's going to be people that, that pass away that are close to you. There's going to be situations, you know, you lose your job. There's going to be things that can affect your mental health that on can a day to day your basis. Mental health mm -hmm. and, and having that open communication with your partner on a daily basis before marriage and after marriage or during marriage, during marriage mm -hmm. is very important to just verbalize, Hey, I, you know, I'm, I'm struggling with this right now mm -hmm. and this is how you can help me or mm -hmm. just, you know, and if you don't know, even know how to be, how, to be helped just saying like, this is what I'm dealing with. This right. is what I'm feeling. I don't know how to be helped in this moment, but I just want to let you know that these are, this is what I'm experiencing at this moment mm -hmm. and we can work through it together. Yep. Amen. Um, yep. And so the last two points that we are going to discuss is political views and lifestyle expectations. So with the political views, who I think, Especially considering the time that we are in right now right. and all that we're in 2022, but your political standpoint and views tie into like your everyday life, yeah. um, how you choose to raise your kids, how you view people, how you view systems. Um, I mean, it can really be dissected. And if you all aren't on the same page when it comes to political views, which shapes some people's, it's like their identity. Right. Um, it can cause a major divide in a relationship. It can, it can. Not to say that you can't have very different views and and being being a thriving relationship, but it's good to understand your partner's political viewpoint before you dive into something. Because if you do decide to have children, um, and things like that, yeah, it's 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 so much more like politics. Is it's just not just politics and your beliefs and, on, and, and yeah, and, on your yeah. beliefs, your moral beliefs, your religion your i mean everything it it, it kind of ties into everything like all of your different beliefs now last but certainly not least is lifestyle expectations and aspirations mm -hmm. because we we actually have like three different topics about expectations because mm -hmm. like we said marriage is a long thing yep but one of the major things is talking about What's your lifestyle expectations? What, what what do you what do you want your life to look like? Yeah, like what does life look like? What does life look together. like together? Mm -hmm. How do you want to live? Where do you want to live? Mm -hmm. These things are very important to talk about because if one person wants to live in the Rocky Mountains yeah. and one person wants to live by the by the ocean by or the ocean, beach it, in a coastal city, in it's a coastal like city that makes it really hard. We're so, not on the same page. <laughs> yeah. Or if somebody wants to live in the in the country out in the boondocks with no with a population of 50 people if somebody wants to live in a big city that's going to make a situation a marriage very hard to operate because you guys are on two different parallels i almost mm. i almost hit her in the face like <laughs> sheesh <laughs> but yeah i mean yeah it's lifestyle expectations lifestyle expectations and then kind of piggybacking off of that is aspirations and we're, we're kind of combining both lifestyle expectations and aspirations together because they're kind of two in one. But aspirations, like what do you want your home to look like? Do you have do you want to be a homeowner? Do you want to live in the city? Do you want to live in the, the rural areas? Do you want well, like what are your bucket list items? Like what are the what where do you want to travel? Yeah, like do you want to swim with the sharks and your partner join you in doing that? Right. Do you want to jump out of a plane? Do you want to, you know, like hike a mountain? You know, is there are so many things that you have to that you have to discuss. Um, and there are times where you're not always going to be on the same page when it comes to aspirations, but definitely communicating. Yeah, because if your because if your aspirations are in line 
that's going to give you some fulfillment to be like, okay, this this is uh, going to be a fun journey to have mm -hmm. with this person for decades to come. Mm -hmm. So aligning and just talking about your 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 aspirations and the things that you want to do and mm -hmm. achieve and the things you places you want to go, those things add value to the relationship and making sure that you guys want to do them together and be like, okay, let's, let's join this journey together. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So with all of that said, I hope we didn't keep you guys too long and enjoyed the 10 points that we just wanted to highlight and discuss um, what we feel is important to talk about before marriage, because like we said, we want love to win out here. Like we want you guys to thrive in your relationships, to thrive in your finances, just to thrive all around. And in order to do that, you got to dive into some of these topics and have these conversations with your partner so that you can be in it for the long haul. Amen to that. And I second everything that she said. So we're going to wrap this up. We're going to go over the 10 points really quickly in a list. So number one, finances, discussing debt, bills, etc. Number two, financial expectations. Do you want your spouse to work in a marriage to income household? Number three. Are we having kids? Number four. Religion. Number five. Partner expectations. Number six. Sexual expectations and intimacy. Number seven. Family history and health. Number eight. Mental history and health. Number nine. Political views. Number 10. Lifestyle expectations and aspirations. And with that said, guys, we're gonna sign off. We hope you enjoy this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this content with your family and friends. And with that, my name is Jen. I'm Shane. And this is Humble Beginnings to Winning. Enjoy the journey. Bye.